we just completed a few months out cruising. And on our way back up the St. John's River to Sanford, we explored a few new side trips to us off the river that were really interesting and we're eager to share. It has been a minute since we have done a produced video on the Technomadia channel. No, but the, over the last uh, well, few weeks, we've recorded so much interesting footage. We're like, maybe we should actually put this into a video and not just do a live with a few little clips. So here we are with an update on some cool side trips off the St. John's River that, well, we just finished exploring. So we have done the St. John's River multiple times over the past few years. As you know, we've <laughs> kind of gotten addicted to Sanford, Florida, and the only way to get here is via the river. You come in at the ICW on and going into Jacksonville, and it's about a 120-ish mile journey, depending on how many side trips you take, uh -huh. to get to uh, Sanford. And you are traveling upriver when you're coming south because the river flows, flows north. north. And yeah, every time we go, we try to mix it up a little bit and find some interesting new things to make keep the river fresh because there, there's so much to see and do along this river. And this year in particular, this trip in particular, we found some new places that we had never even contemplated exploring before and one that we almost explored before on our very first trip up the river and didn't quite make. So I guess let's start with talking yeah. about that. Yeah, so we left Jacksonville. We did some boat projects up there, maybe or maybe not. We'll do a video <laughs> on the projects. Don't but we, know. But we've done some lives that if you want to check them out, yeah. we covered them. So. Yeah. yeah. So on our very first trip up the St. John's River to Sanford, that was back in 2018. You can let her go. Oh. You didn't have to sit here. <laughs> In 2018, uh, we had heard such great things about Whitey's, which is on Doctors Lake. And this is still technically in the Jacksonville area. Yeah, so Doctors Lake is one of the first lakes that veer off the river. And we heard Whitey's Fish Camp, and we're thinking, fish camp, you know, you know, go up a creek, and it is up a creek off the side of this lake, and you go up the creek and you're getting maybe a shack with somebody ha having fish off a grill or something like that. So that's kind of what we expected, and we heard, but we said it's supposed to be a good thing to go check out. So we anchored in the middle of Doctors Lake, two miles from the creek that goes to Whitey's, set off on our dinghy, which was still relatively new to us, and the motor died completely in sight of Whitey's. So we ended up rowing back because the Never sun was setting. There was no one around to help. <laughs> Rowed back, and then we had a whole video on the uh, the engine, engine debacle and the failure then, and swept, swapping out a Suzuki for a Yamaha. So we never made it to Whitey's, and in all of our trips back and forth on the river, we it never lined up for us to go explore Whitey's. So we finally did this trip. And it was amazing. It's huge. It is. It <laughs> it's is not, not this little what tiny I imagine fish a fish camp to be. You know, it's a big, glorious restaurant with an outdoor bar and live music and um, and docks to come up with your boat. We we anchored with in why not in doctors like a lot closer this time, um, and then just dinging in, and had some uh, wonderful food and uh, some great drinks. So. Yep. So then um, from there you cruise further south. Uh, Green Coast Springs, which is our place of domicile with St. Brendan's Isle. It's where our mail forwarding is at. That's where we use our, our voting address. So we stopped in for lunch there. It's always good to go home. <laughs> <laughs> I met up with some friends in the area. It was great to meet some new friends in the area who uh, had us anchor right off of their house and enjoyed That's an enjoyable a, evening. I think it's the first time we visited people's house by boat, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So that was actually really kind of cool. Um, and then it's wide open river all the way down to about Palatka. So we just made a long cruising day of it. Got down to Palatka, did an overnight there, explored. Love, love getting ashore in Palatka. It's yeah. a cool town. We've yeah. done other past things on that too, because that's a repeat. But then after Palatka, we decided to take a very little side trip off the side trip, um, going up Dunn's Creek to Crescent Lake. So this is a very, very twisty creek that um, you know, requires a lot of uh, very careful hand steering. with A lot of precise hand steering. <laughs> and uh, thankfully, the Navionics charts were spot on because there are a lot of shallow spots that you have to navigate around, and there are no marked channels There's to mark nothing them. nothing marked. Nothing marked at all. It is, um, first er part of it is a, a lot of, um, I guess, more creekside cabins and small little communities, but then it becomes complete jungle wilderness and it is gorgeous and then it opens up on crescent lake this also 
you know, fairly undeveloped lake in the middle of Florida. It's a huge lake, though. And we had visited uh, Crescent City along the lake on our van trips back in May when our boat was being worked on up in Jacksonville. We did a month <laughs> out on the van. And uh, so we were familiar with Crescent City, and, and we had found a great restaurant there. We loved a Mexican restaurant, El Amigo, that is just amazing. Oh, so good. So we wanted to go back. And we knew we had spotted some public docks. But and there's not much information on this area. As people go there and cruise there, we knew it was passable. Particularly in smaller boats. So that we, we were like, can, why not make it? A couple of years ago, I looked at the charts. I was like, it looks like an interesting side trip, but it, too nervous to do it. Now, much more confidence in us and our boat and everything. And it's like, yeah, we could do this. And we did. And we got we got up there. I think we only, it got down to six and a half feet. So we actually had plenty of depth just by four. plotting our course very, very carefully. Um, and uh, got into uh, Crescent Lake after this beautiful cruise up the up Dunn Creek. And, um, and Sheree's like, hey, I think I see a dock that might get us to a grocery store. It's not that we needed groceries, but we always love to find ways to get ashore next to a grocery store. So I found a public dock right across from a Winn-Dixie, um, and then <laughs> got some fresh produce. That's always good to restock when you're doing an extended cruise, because there's not a lot of provisioning along the St. John's River. Um, and then we uh, went and anchored off of the Sunrise Park in Crescent City, which gave us access to our Mexican restaurants. We had an yeah. amazing night out having a great meal. And yeah, and just walking around and exploring the town. Um, the public docks there are completely rebuilt and there's some really beautiful docks. We found the anchorage was, had, there was, it's not even a marked anchorage in Active Captive, but we anchored right off the docks and um, had really good holding. Uh, there's a, another restaurant there called Three Bananas that's mm -hmm. also apparently very famous for people to take either motorcycle or boat trips to. So it's a and they have Somebody docks there for out. their customers. And there is a little public dock there as well at the yeah. ramp. So lots of options to get ashore in Crescent City if you want to go explore. It's a cute little town, um, historic <laughs> town. It's a lot of peacocks there on yes. one of the main streets. Yeah, so it's, 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 it's cute. It's, it's really, you know, it's kind of it's fun to be. Like we were basically the only big boat in the entire the lake. lake. So, so uh, instead of heading right back uh, through Dunn's Creek, we decided to go explore one of the remote corners of the lake, and, lake and, yeah. and just kind of be on our own. So we went down to Called Dead Lake and Haw Creek comes off of it, and there's nothing up there. It is beautiful and remote, um, and we decided to anchor um, to the cove for, right outside. Yeah, in the, the cove, creek. we weren't looking for protection from the wind. We were looking for a breeze to keep the um, keep us cool. Uh, anchored out there, and then explored. Haw Creek, which I, the only thing I could find out about it was that a little note in Active Captain saying there is a Civil War, sunken Civil War gunboat several miles up this creek that you can check out. And I'm like, that sounds interesting. Let's go up this creek in the dinghy. And, um, and it is, first off, we get right into Haw Creek and immediately run into um, a clog. Well, it's a whole bunch of duckweed, duckweed and, uh, and logs and really thick. So we had to, 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 to row through it, get past it, and then get through the other side. Went up this beautiful twisty creek. Eventually did find this uh, sunken Civil War well, boat. Well, you didn't find the sunken part. We found the, the bow la, of the it. The last part sitting, that hasn't rusted away. Sitting on the ledge. That part wasn't <laughs> sunk. That's all we actually that's, found. Yeah, that's all, that, all that's left. But it, it, that actually did inspire me to look in the history. And when the Union took Jacksonville from the Confederacy, the Confederates um, sank all the boats they had captured up in Dunn Creek, including in um, the the crew, and Hog the, Creek too. Yeah, in, yeah, in Hog Creek and Dunn Creek, including the the schooner America, which won the very first America's Cup in 1951, 1851. So this amazing, huge, historic boat was sunk in the creek, and that was then eventually raised and went on to serve in all the way up until World War II with the Navy. Amazing history. Look up America, the schooner. Always fun to research the stuff that happened in the area <laughs> it's you so visit fun. in our travels. Yes. Um, so yeah, then there was supposed to have been a dock access to a boardwalk in the state park there at Hawk Creek Preserve yeah. State Park. And uh, there was another one of these clogs. <laughs> clogs this one was much worse. Through. Did not get through it. <laughs> but so, still, fun, fun dinghy ride. Yep. So we just enjoyed a nice night anchored out. And then we went back, retraced our steps through Dunn Creek. I navigated coming in. You navigated yep. going out. Mm -hmm. So it was kind you, of fun. You we both, got to have fun driving in I, the twisties. I love the precise little steering. It's just so much more fun. Yeah. Then uh, particularly coming down because you have the current with you. You're like swinging these corners and you're like, oh my gosh, I almost have to swing around. And it's it's, uh -huh. it's, it's, it's kind of fun to do that in the boat. And, and not at fast speed. This is just at oh, know, five, six knots. Oh yeah, and, going know, really slow. Because <laughs> there's a lot of communities there. You don't want to yeah. pick up weight oh, yeah. on their docks either. <laughs> 
Um, okay, so next up, uh, Wallaka. We always stop in Wallaka. Uh, we, this time we anchored right off the town docks, just right across the channel. Usually we pick like the spots. More remote ones. But the by the Oklawaha River or Turkey Creek or something like that. This time we just, a lunch stop. And then uh, just quick dinging over to the town docks, went ashore and had our shrimp saras. I love shrimp saras. And, and wonderful, some of the best shrimp you've ever had, I guess you'd say. It's, I, yeah. it's, it's up there. Yeah, it's okay. really good. Uh, but this time, instead of, instead, we just, again, did some research. It's like, let's find something we haven't done before. And just on the other side of the bend around Wallaka heading south is Mud Cove, right? Mud Creek Cove. Mud Creek Cove. And found out how um, I've been doing some research. And it's like, wait, there's a, a natural spring there that might maybe have swimming, and, and it might of potentially the be Forest. accessible by water. So we're like, let's let's anchor and let's go up this mud creek and see if we can find a way to get ashore and find the spring. And again, we did, and we had to had to row through a clog, very very shallow creek, but not a very long one. So it was actually not too far up the creek. We found a tiny little dock. More of a kayaking dock, basically. But it's a little tiny cleats, but we made it workable. <laughs> uh, it is a fee area. You're supposed to pay $2 per person to yes. go ashore, uh, which you pay online. And, and yeah. I'm sure they're paying more in fees than they are getting out of it. That's crazy. <laughs> but And then, then you're there, and then suddenly there's this uh, um, clear water pool that they've kind of built up a dam around this spring with uh, steps going down into it and swimming in because it's... a Quite a long hike, you know, a mile plus hike to get there from land. It's was we almost had it to ourselves. You know, like one other person came by. Yep, and also great trails out there. So in the morning we went back, and uh, did our runs in the morning, and then it was so great because it's freaking hot now. <laughs> probably hot where you are too and uh, it was great to uh be able to cool off in the springs after our run before returning back to the boat so yeah. that i think that's going to be a new favorite anchorage yeah because there's the other the classic springs that everybody goes to is silver glen springs and salt springs off of lake george but particularly like we went to silver glen springs again on our trip across uh, lake george it is so packed and so full of it boats was, and partiers yeah. and stuff like that much preferred swimming at mud spring where that is big you can you know there's <laughs> not, a, you know there's little tiny fish and you're not, not going to be doing any snorkeling there it's yeah. it's shallow and maybe got up to about yeah. waist yeah I, it it's, was it's, a, it's a swimming but, it's a it's a nice little swimming hole as opposed to a big giant bring your boat in and party spring but yeah, yeah, we, we had a great time it was really yeah. fun to do something different like that yep so we did make the stop at uh, silver glen spring on a tuesday it was <laughs> it was crowded it was just not it was cool and refreshing it's great to in the clear water with the fish, but it's just too crowded. Um, so yeah, then we uh, continued on. We did an overnight in Aster, off of uh, I think it's Shell Island. We call it Party Poop yeah. Island. <laughs> that was just yeah. a quick overnight. Mm -hmm. and yeah, then, we got to Dodge a storm crossing uh, Lake George oh, too, yeah. which was fun. That was, that was some of the most exciting boating we've ever done. The waves were actually crashing and hitting our new um, enclosure on the top on the flybridge. We're having waves and spray hit over yeah, to the Yeah, there's a storm exciting. coming right <laughs> after us and we were able to go up on plane and stay just ahead of it and totally missed it. It was, it was, it was fun. It was, it, I was imagining like this action film adventure as we're doing that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and yeah, it felt safe though, but yeah, it was fun. Oh yeah. And, and then yeah, from going south from Astor was some of our favorite parts of the river to cruise. Uh, it's just um, the area between Astor and uh, DeLand, there's nothing there except for twisty, beautiful river. And uh, I think we just just loved cruising that. It's just, yeah, it's, it's, just it's my fun. favorite part of the river. And you know, if you're ever doing the St. John's River and you're not gonna go that far south, do some of the twisty parts in the north part, like uh, Murphy's Creek, because that is the most reminiscent of it to get a taste of what it's like, the South River. I just love it. It's all wildlife. You usually have it to yourself. You saw alligators and birds and manatees yeah. and it's um, yeah. just peaceful, yes. wonderful cruising. Uh, and then we spent two nights at our favorite anchorage, uh, Butcher's Bend. Uh, we just had, before you get to Lake Monroe. Yep, we got there in time to handle some work calls and <laughs> stay there. And the heat was really picking up and we actually ran our generator. I think we did one night overnight. We, we, with the first time we ran the generator overnight to keep cool. Oh yeah, we're just like, you know, let's splurge the fuel. And yeah, you know, I know a lot of boaters, they run their generator 24 seven once they leave the dock. This is the first time we ran our generator overnight. Most, most of these uh, hot days, air conditioning overnight, yeah. we, we've been doing well to uh, run the generator from 
it's about 11 in the morning until about until 4, 4 or 5, 5 in the afternoon. Yeah. And then we just open up all the windows until the bugs come out and just keep cool. And then we have the hot tub on board, which we do not heat in the summer. And it was a cold plunge. In, a, a alligator free cold plunge. Alligator free there's cold always plunge. the river. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we had, we had a, a really great time. So much of a great time on this river cruise. Um, cruising, getting, we got ashore almost every single day for walks and runs and exploring. Um, and then enjoying our cold plunge and just, you know, just it's felt just a wonderful cruise. It's yeah. what the St. John's River is all about. Definitely make a, a trip of it sometime. <laughs> Unfortunately, when you get to Sanford, there's limited docking options right now because um, they're still recovering, recovering from, from the hurricanes last year. But hopefully, they'll they'll once they start getting more slips online and stuff, they'll they'll eventually have more space and uh, yep. you can actually stay in Sanford and, and enjoy what we love about Sanford. And we're we're back in Sanford for a little bit. I don't know what the rest of the year holds for us. Might be a van trip in our future if the tropics behave, but uh, we'll be back here in Sanford for a bit and hopefully resuming it. This last three months out cruising have just been it, amazing. It, it re reminded us of what we love about living on the boat and cruising and exploring like that. Definitely so. has re reinvigorated the, uh, the desire to get out back to active cruising again and maybe actually resuming the great loop next year <laughs> like we intended to do this year but yes, medical other stuff came up yep. but so we'll anyway see. we're doing well uh we have been doing about monthly lives they're rather last minute so make sure you're subscribed to the channel to get those notifications uh we try to give a day's notice but it doesn't always work <laughs> out that way but we are trying to do uh, monthly lives those have been a lot easier than these produced videos just updating on what's up uh, love to take your questions, interact, and hang out. So come join us for one of those. Uh, these produced videos are going to be few and far between. Probably. Unless we're doing something fun that we can capture. <laughs> but yeah, we got some good footage, so hopefully you'll enjoy this video. All right. It's good to catch up, guys. We'll see you later. Bye. We create these videos just for fun, and we love having you along for the ride. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. Leave a comment. Or, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. See you next time!